next. So we write it out as it repeats. And you go out as far as you have patience to go out. All right, we want to go out to the hundredths position. That's this one right here. So next door, five or greater, yes. So that goes up by one, 3.63. Okay? And we're rounding it to the thousandths position. That would be this one here. Again, five or greater, no. So it's 3.6. Six to six at that point. Okay. Any others? This one. Okay, we're going to take uh, fractions and decimals to a new height now. You can probably learn more about them than you want to know, but that's the way it is. First of all, of course, we need an eraser. Nothing can happen without an eraser in this world. Oh. There's one right here. Is it clean? No, it's not. All right, this will have to be one more box. That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> what we'd like to do is go between fractions and decimals with a sense of ease. And there are some fractions that are extremely easy to write as decimals. Not, unfortunately, not too many. So the idea is converting between fractions and decimals. There are some fractions that have denominators that are easy to convert into 10 or some power of 10, 100,000, whatever. For example, you take something like 3 fifths. Oh, it doesn't take much to get a 10 down there. You just multiply by 2. But of course, that would change the fraction, so you have to multiply the top by 2 in order not to change it. So you have to take care of top and bottom, and that would give you a 6 on the top and a 10 on the bottom. Now, the reason why that's so easy is, of course, it means 6 in the 10th position. And therefore, as a decimal, it would look like this, 6 in the 10th position, 6 tenths. So that goes very easily. And there are several others that are like that. You could do something like um, 12 uh, 25ths. And again, what does it take to get a power of 10 down there? Just multiply by 4. You've got 100. But you must multiply the top by 4 also. So that's 48 up there and 100 down here. 48 hundredths would be written in decimal form. Decimals are made for that kind of thing. It would be 48. And that 8 is in the hundredths position. So that's 48 hundredths. That's 4 tenths and 8 hundredths, which is 48 hundredths. Okay. So some of them are very easy. Now the problem with the decimal system, I've talked about it before, is um, a lot of fractions that we use on a daily basis don't do that. In other words, it takes up to like one third, which is a very common fraction. I mean, you use that when you make your recipe, right? A third cup of flour or something like that. It's something you find around the house, literally. All right, three doesn't play well with ten. You know, there's no number that you can multiply three by to get ten. No whole number. So three is not considered a factor of ten. And there's no way to make it a factor of ten. So what do you do with something like that? Well, uh, we've already talked about this situation. This gives rise to repeaters. And repeaters are unfortunately very common in the decimal system. Uh, this one, I mean, all you do is, in this case, the, the only thing you can do with this is divide the three into the one. And it's a decimal division. And make it a one with a decimal point. That's a whole number there, so no need to move the decimal point. Just bring it up, attach a few zeros, and start dividing. And so 3 into 10 would go 3 times, and so forth. And the repetition starts right away, 3 into 10 again, and so forth. So in other words, we can say that this is 0 0.3 with a bar over it. And um, that's it. That's a mathematical notation, that bar thing. No one outside this room is going to understand it, but in the room, we will understand that that means it repeats and so forth. Um, let's do a few more repeaters just to get used to them. This 
Suppose we look at four ninths. Well, and once again, nine is a denominator that you can't easily convert into ten. So it's going to be a problem. Anything like that is going to give rise to repeaters. So nine into four. Same kind of procedure here. Just do a straightforward decimal division. Nine into forty. Five is forty. I'm sorry. Nine times five is forty. Yeah. Nine times five is forty. Like not the last time I checked. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Yeah. All That's right. right. I have Go to ahead. get you some <laughs> tables. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it keeps on going. So this thing is written as zero point four with a bar. Now. A little bit about notation here. With repeaters, we have to get used to writing them correctly. Yes, the part that repeats has the bar. And remember, it's only on the right-hand side of the decimal point. If, even if you had a 4 over there on the left-hand side, the bar would not go across that 4, only on the fractional part of here. However, there's another way to write this. And it's giving uh, an estimation of the number. In other words, you could write it like this. We be equal signs, meaning it's not exactly equal, it's approximately equal. And it would look like this, maybe 0 0.44. Now what we've done is rounded to the hundredths position there. You could go out further, you could go out to the thousandths position, 0 0.444. But anytime you chop off a repeater anywhere, you're making a mistake. There's an error induced by doing that. Because this is not exactly the same thing as that. This goes on forever, this stops right there. So you're chopping off untold millions of fours, and they don't like that. <laughs> you know? So they can value, if, you, if you're going to use that in a, in a, in a calculation, boy, well, you'll see the difference. You know? Where you chop it off makes a difference if you're going to multiply it by something. And we'll look at that a little later, and that's not exactly where we are right now, but repeaters are like that. Now, to go to the ultimate type of repeater. Nothing repeats more than sevenths. Ooh. Sevenths are famous for repeating. What are they famous for? They're famous for the longest group of numbers that you have to put the bar over. Okay, now you better have some patience with this. Here we go. We're going to look at four sevenths. And that's not a terrible fraction, you know? I mean, you can yeah. come across that almost anywhere in life, right? Here it goes. So 7 gets divided into the 4. You better put some zeros there. All right, 7 into 40, what would you say? 5. 5 times 9. Okay, that's a 35. All right, here we go. 5 remainder, bring down. 7 into 50. 7. 7. Seven. Seven. Yeah, 49. Okay, one, bring down, seven into ten. One. All right, here we go. Four. So we're getting the idea. At this point, you know, most people give up before this. But, you know, if, if, at that point, most people would say to themselves, well, uh, I guess it doesn't repeat. Hmm. All right, so the leftover is two. That's what we started with. That's the repeater. I know. It's unbelievable, right? Look how long you had to wait to get the repeater. Seven are like that. How many zeros? You just you choose how many zeros after the fraction? No, you just keep going until it starts repeating. Yeah, you have to have patience with this. Yeah, that's the way it is. Okay, that's the repeater for sevens. Sorry. Are you calculating? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Divide, take four and divide it by seven. 
You'll see it. You see it there? Yeah. See, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, and of course it puts a lead on there, so it's seven. You've still got more digits. It displays ten digits, right? Mm -hmm. So you start seeing the repeating over here, you get a five, seven, one over there. Right. Yeah. I mean, do they have some that repeat that are maybe ten digits out or something, or twelve? Oh, yeah. Well, there's plenty of numbers oh, that have long have repeats, that one, but long this repeats. is a common one, this is a common you know, one. with a small denominator that has a huge repeater. Hmm. Yeah, they're sort of a pain. But we're going to have to learn how to work with them because there's so many of them. There has to be some technique, some strategy with repeaters, and we'll get to that very soon. On page 260 of your book, there's a little table up at the top, the TAN table. This is a table to memorize, please. I don't ask you to memorize tables very often, but this one you should know. This has ninths in it. 260. 260. Okay. This has ninths. Ninths are extremely nice repeaters for the simple reason that what well, we just did four ninths. What did we get with four ninths? Anyone remember? 0 0.4 bar. Okay. How about three ninths? Actually, we did that one today too, didn't we? No, no, we didn't do three ninths, but we did one third. Oh. Is it one third and three ninths? Yeah. Ah, okay. And we found out that was 0 0.3 with a bar on it. Are we seeing a pattern yet? Yeah. It looks like all you do with ninths is put a bar over the numerator. And that's true. Hmm. It is correct with ninths. Seven ninths, no need to calculate it. It's going to be 0 0.7 with a bar. That's the nice thing about ninths. Is yeah, they're repeaters, but they're easy to remember. So that helps. And the table also has some other very common fractions in it, like uh, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and so forth. Uh, just good to, good to remember a few of those. Okay, uh, let's do this problem. It says convert the fraction to a decimal rounded to the indicated place value. They give you 162 divided by 7. They want that rounded to the tenths. Okay, now that's an improper fraction, of course. But we can certainly do the division. We know how to do long division now, so we set it up with the denominator as the divisor and the numerator as the dividend. And they want it rounded to the tenths position. So this is the position we're going to round to, right? The first one to the right of the decimal point, which means we're actually going to have to get this quotient over one more to the hundredths position so we can do the rounding. Okay, let's do it. Seven into 16, two. two. Remainder of two and a breakdown. Seven into 22. Three. Three. And that gives you a 21. And then you bring down a zero. One, uh huh? Yeah. Okay, 7 into 33. Four. Four. Okay, we can stop there because we're rounding. If we're rounding to that position, all we need to see is one more. Five or greater? No. So this is approximately equal to 23.1. Okay? We don't make this, we don't increase that one because it's not five or greater, and we're rounding to the tenth, so it has to be expressed as a tenth. There it is, it's a tenth. Okay, but that's not the total answer. This is not the real answer because we chopped off everything else. So you have because it's a seventh, you know it's going to be a big mm -hmm. chunk that repeats. Yeah. And we chopped the whole thing off. Seven or answer the waiting lines are yeah, because it's not equal. Yeah. The, the, these two things are not equal to each other. They differ in the hundredths position. If you're doing a calculation where you only need accuracy to the tenth position, this is fine. You know? But if you're doing one that requires, let's say you're doing a machine shop kind of thing where you're, you're, you're you know, creating these uh, nuts and bolts to within a few millimeters of, or maybe tenths of a millimeter, you need much more accuracy. And that's not going to do. You're going to have to go more than that. 
you're doing the not equal signs because it, because you're telling it, it goes out further. That the digits go out further. No, I'm, I'm using the wavy equal sign to mean right. approximately equals. Oh, approximately. Approximately equals. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay, so then your book gives you little tables to fill in. And here's table number one. It's example four, it's on page 261. They're going to give you some decimals and ask for the fractions and vice versa. So it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. I want you to be able to go back and forth between these things. Okay, so let's do it. Now there's different techniques that are going to come up as we do these. Alright, 475, 0.475. Well, probably the easiest way to handle a decimal is simply say, say the words. I know it's strange. I mean, that's a very strange technique, but that works. This is 475 thousandths, right? Because that five is in the thousandths position. So this is 475 thousandths, okay? Now, of course, always reduce fractions. So we don't want to just write that in there. If you look at the back of the book, that's not the answer. So we reduce it. Now, in 475 and a thousand, you're looking for the greatest thing you can divide the whole. And so we've got an idea? 25. 25, great. All right, so 25 goes into that. Well, it goes into 100 four times. And there's 10 of those hundreds. So that would be 40 down here. Huh? And it goes up there again into 100. It goes four times. And there's four. So that's 16. And then there's three more. That would be 19. 19 25s in there. So it comes out to be 19 over 40. Now there's nothing common between 19 and 40. One's even, one's odd. <coughs> Neither of them adds to three or a, um, um, a number that's divisible by three. So all those divisibility rules are giving us nothing. So we're done. So the answer is 19 40 mm -hmm. Okay, now 3 sixteenths, how will we do that? Well. I mean, basically all you can do right now is divide. Now, not everything's going to appear as a repeater. Not every fraction will become a repeater. Let's see what happens with this one. All right, 16 into 30, no. 16 into 300. What would you say there? I'm saying 16 into 30, it does go in once. Yeah. Okay, so there's 16. Okay, 14, 16 into 140. Eight times. Eight times? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that gives us 12, 120. Oh, that's pretty obvious, huh? Eight times 16 is 128, so I guess seven will work, huh? Okay, seven times six is 42. And Okay. All right. So, can we try it one more time? 16 into 80? What do you think? Mm. Five? Let's try five. Ah, look at that. Hey, good thing we tried it. Zero. Is that a repeater? No. No, that, that terminates. Terminates means it stops. After a certain point, you get nothing but zero. So this would be exactly what you see there, 0 0.1815. 75. Seven. Is that a 7 up there? Mm -hmm. uh. Okay. All right, so that's how you get that one. You simply do the division. You can do it on your calculator, too. All right, now 2 and 4 fifths. Now that's a mixed number. The whole number part remains a whole number part as a decimal. That doesn't change. Decimals don't change whole numbers. So this becomes 2. Now what you want to do there is figure out what 4 fifths is. 
Now, luckily, four-fifths is one of those fractions that converts easily into a decimal fraction. Just multiply top and bottom by two. So you get eight-tenths, which would be 0 0.8. So this is going to be 2.8. Here's the two part, and there's the 0.8 part. Just put them together, 2.8. Why did you multiply it by two? To get a, a ten as a denominator makes it a decimal fraction. Makes it very easy to write as a decimal. See, when this is, that's eight in the tenths position. So eight tenths is that. It's very simple. It's just place value stuff. Yeah. Hmm. All right, let's do the bottom one. This one. Well, you can sit there and scratch your head for years and not get that one, right? Hmm. But if you remember table 4.1, that bar over the 6 means this is 6 ninths. Of course, don't leave it like that. Reduce it, huh? 2 thirds. Huh? But how do you, how, can you explain how <coughs> 6 ninths? Yeah, you just divide. Divide, divide 9 into 6. Okay. Yeah. And it comes out to be uh, 0.66. Why would it be 6 times 6 times why wouldn't it be? It's in the tenth position, so why wouldn't it be six tenths? Oh, no, no, no. no that, that's deceiving. Oh. That's a notation that we use, but it's, it's really not true. What that number really is. <laughs> what the really, that's what that number really is. Oh. Okay. I mean, that's so it. Where do you get the nine from? Yeah, I don't know. Where do you get the 9 from? Where do I get the 9 from? It's just a rule. It's just a rule. Go to the table 4.1. Okay, 4.1 shows you that if you have a bar over the 6, that is the fraction of 6 ninths. So you reduce 6 ninths into 2 thirds. You just need to remember it. Oh, yeah, I said memorize the table. Did you come in oh. after that? No, no, I, I heard you say that. Oh, I just have to memorize the table. I don't know. Why tomorrow? Yeah, it's in my homework. Remember it, but I have it yet. It's on page 16. Okay. okay. And if you can't I've heard every excuse in the book. It's a big book. So, you have memorized it? Come on. No, I've been listening to all this. It's the simplest table in the world. There's nothing simpler than that at all. All right. So, oh, 1911, so let's do that yeah. one. Okay, now this is going to be a mixed, but it will be a decimal. The question is do 11ths repeat? Well, what do you think? Most likely. Does 11 play well with 10? No, no it does not. Yes, this is going to repeat, absolutely. Yeah, 11 into 19, one. Okay, so we get eight, and now we start our process. 11 into 80. The 11s are very nice. Seven. That's seven, yeah. <coughs> 77, three, and so forth. Into 30, 22, and so forth. Oh, here, just repeated, there it is. Got a remainder of eight again. That means we're on our repeating cycle now. So it's seven and so forth. Okay. So you can see what's happening. This is going to be 1, and then put the 7, 2 on there, but put a bar over it. That's the math notation. How do you know how many zeros you're going to have? How many? Zero. You don't. You have to keep going. Yeah. Okay. Anytime you have a denominator that is not a factor of 10 or some power of 10, you're going to get a repeat. So the question is, how long will it take? Well, there's no way to predict it. You know, I mean, who would think that sevenths require six decimal places to repeat? I mean, that's not something that's intuitively obvious at all. So you can't, you don't know how many zeros you have to put. You have to keep going. You know? All right, so they want you to fill out some tables in the homework and so forth. Um, all right, let's do some more here. Uh, let's go back to the number line again and start uh, drawing decimal numbers on the number line and ordering them and stuff like that. We've done some of this already, but let's let's go ahead and do it again. We're going to do it with repeaters now. Okay, let's. 
let's do this. Uh, this will be a zero, this will be a one. And the numbers we're going to look at now go like this. They give us 0 0.45 with a bar, and then 0 0.45 without the bar, and then 1 half. So they want us to compare those two different types of numbers, and in order to do that, you have to convert back and forth between one or the other. Um, probably it's easy to go to all decimals. And if we do that, of course, then all we have to do is change that to a decimal equivalent. But that is one of those that gets written very easily as a decimal because it's got a denominator that plays well with 10. By top and bottom by 5, and you've got 5 tenths, which is 0 0.5. Okay. So we're comparing these three numbers. Now, again, we have to get out of our little math notation there and write that as it really is. That's 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, and so forth. This one is just 0 0.45. This one is 0 0.5. And the way you order decimals is a very simple process. You simply look at place value by place value. OK, so first we go to tenths. This is 4 in the tenths position. This is 4 in the tenths position. These two are identical in the tenths position. But this one is not. This one is bigger, which means you've got more in this tenths position than you do in these two, so it's further to the right. It's a larger number. And if we're going to put it in, of course, that happens to be 1 half, as we know. So this would be 0 0.5 right there. OK, so that's the largest of the three. Now, go back to these two. We're finished with that one. We know where it is. All right, go back to these two. All right, the hundredths position, these are both identical. But this one has something in the thousand. This one has 0 in the thousand, nothing. Okay? So therefore, this is a larger number than this is. And so if you're going to look at the order of these things, it would be something like this. This would be maybe, we we'll call this uh, 0 0.4. And 0 0.45 would be right about there. But this one is going to be in between these two. It's going to be extremely close, but it will be to the right of that one. 0 0.4545 dot dot dot. So that would be very hard to see there because they're going to be within a few thousandths of each other. But there's the two orders. First this one, second that one, third that one. So it goes like this. If you want to write them out with commas. That would be the correct order. Okay. Let's do a little pen dots with this. What we're going to do now is use pen dots first of all just on decimal expressions. Just to get used to using it. But then, probably we'll do this tomorrow, we're going to go to pen dots being used with combinations of decimals and fractions. Strangely enough, that is a very tricky area. And the reason is simple. You can have a fraction as simple as one-third. I mean, really, we've calculated with that many, many times in our lives, right? You write it as a decimal, it becomes a horror show. It's a repeater. It goes on forever. And especially if you're going to take that one-third and multiply it by five, let's say. You say, well, I'll just chop off the repeater. Yeah, and the error you made just got multiplied five times. So it gets worse and worse. So this is the problem with repeaters. When you put them in real calculations, you have to be very careful how you do it. And we'll look at that tomorrow. But right now, let's take a look at um, MDOS. So we're doing stuff like this. 16.4, subtract in parentheses, 6.7 minus 3.5 squared. Okay, it's all decimals. No problem here. No such thing as a repeater, so it's easy to finish this. We do what's inside first because we're using M laws. <laughs> so parentheses is first. So we do a simple subtraction. And decimals are wonderful with that. 
All right, so we have 16.4 minus 3.2 squared. Now, the test showed up some interesting answers on a problem like this. Very creative answers. That's a joke in mathematics. <laughs> All right, we have to square 3.2. That means the entire thing gets multiplied by itself. It is a decimal multiplication process, right? Which we do by forgetting the decimal points and multiplying the whole numbers. And then figuring out where to put the decimal point. All right, so that gives you a 4 and a 6. That gives you a 6 and a 9. Adding all that stuff up, 1,024. But we have two places, you know, a total of two places to the right of the decimal point. So we take this decimal point and force it to have two places to the right. This is 10.24. All right, now let's see what we have. 16.4 minus 10.24 because we squared it. All right, now we do another subtraction. Now in order to do that subtraction, we have to borrow. So we go from here, make that a three, and make this a, a 10. 10 take away four, six, and so forth. So the final answer is 6.16, huh? Can you do it on the calculator? Yes, you can. And actually, PEMDAS situations with decimals are not hard to enter. What you do, your calculator has been designed to sort of replicate English. You just take the English and put it directly into the calculator. It didn't always used to be that way. It used to be a real pain, but not anymore. All right, let's see what the button pushes would be. 16.4 minus 3.2 squared. Okay? I just go from left to right and start putting in the oper operations and the numbers and so forth. So, on the keypad, you push in 16.4. The decimal point is also on the keypad. All right, subtract. And that's a standard operation, subtract. Now, what do you see here? You see parentheses. Well, guess what you got? Because I asked you to get a scientific calculator, right? You got parentheses. So, open the parentheses. Just like it says there, open parentheses. Put in three point, well, three yeah, let's do that one. 6.7, and then subtract. What is it, 3.5? Okay, now close parentheses, just like it says right there. And then you want to raise it to the second power. Now if you have a scientific, <coughs> if you have a scientific, you may have a square button on there. But you may not. You may have only an X to the Y kind of button. But in either case, what you do now is raise to the power. Okay, because you put this in parentheses, <coughs> this is going to be the base of your exponential number. It'll calculate this first because it knows PEMDAS. So it gets 3.2 for this calculation before it raises it to a power. So you could now either push the x squared button, if you have one, and then equals. Or if you don't have an x squared button, it would look like this. Mm -hmm. You should have an x to the y button. Yeah. In other words, that allows you to raise it to any power. This would, of course, only raises it to the second power. And then you have to tell it y. And you tell it y immediately after you push that button. So in this case, it would be 2. And then you push equals. So those are the button pushes. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, it's almost not worth it. That's true. <laughs> it's quicker to calculate it, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a good way to check it. So, but the point is, your calculator was built to do the English expression that you see written here. That's just put it right in exactly left to right. That's x squared, and this is your x to the y. That's x to the y. She has a, a calculator where the x to the y button looks like this, and that's not exactly intuitive. So if you have one of those, it's a Texas instrument, I think. Yeah. The TIs have that kind of, that, that is the x to the y button. They, they think of that as raised to a power, so it looks like it's being raised. You know? I'm not going to make excuses for Texas instruments. That's their problem. <laughs> 
Okay. All right, let's do some homework in this. This is section 4.5.